There's going to be a temptation to read into every interaction yeah. between the North Koreans, the South Koreans, the Americans at these games. Would we be wise to, to read a lot into that? Well, I, I think it's, it's, it's very important that the North Koreans are there. I think it's very important for the South Koreans that they showed up because, remember, two months ago, the South Koreans were worried that attendance would be low and there could be security risks. I think that was even the case with uh, people who were going there to cover it for the news. So that's all gone. That's all in the background. Um, South Korea, North Korea has made unprecedented steps, such as sending a family member down to South Korea for the first time. For the first time, they'll have a unified team. Well, the women's ice the hockey women, team. The women's ice hockey team. Now, that's not going down all that well in South Korea because once that was announced, President Moon, who has very high approval ratings, it actually dipped about 10 percent. Yeah. Yes. The positives went down and the negatives went up. Uh, South Koreans, it's under, understandable, particularly coming from a culture that we do where it's very competitive. These, these, these women were, were practicing all their lives and some of them will not get enough ice time or else won't even make the team. Uh, but so be it. The, uh, I think the, the important thing really uh, towards the end as the, as the days go by will be I think the focus should be on the competition and that's probably where South Korea uh, would want it to be. Mm. Um, it's a huge uh, showcase project for them. You know this is 30 years uh, since the last Olympics and the last Olympics showcased the democracy uh, in Korea when Korea became a, a democratic uh, country. Do you think that's really what caused the popularity though of um the president to drop 10 points as a result of this. I mean, what do you think people fear? Do they fear being in some way vaporized or bombed by North Korea, or do they fear actually reunification and the cost that that would then ensue for South Korea? Well, I, I think some of the, the president still has very high approval ratings, and the approval ratings have stayed, I think, much higher than what has been traditionally the case in South Korea. I think just some of the glow came off when uh, this. See, the North Koreans are trying to present a, uh, an image that this, we're one nation, let's go together as one nation. This one nation, um, indivisible, indivisible South Korean notion, uh, Korean peninsula notion, Korean country notion, has dimmed over the years. But, and but meanwhile, so, we'll continue to develop nuclear weapons. Well, you know, a day before the, the opening ceremonies, uh, North, uh, North Korea moved, moved ahead, advanced its uh, yes. military parade. And had, uh, I think, four large ICBM uh, rockets paraded. You say you see the uh, South Koreans in the U.S. doing a bit of a good cop, bad mm -hmm. cop thing here, with the South Koreans a little more conciliatory. Pence talking about tightening sanctions, no softening at all. Good cop, bad cop, is it mutual tactic? Like that means they're working together, or mm -hmm. so are they? Are these complementary strategies, or are they contradictory strategies? Well, the, the way the way I see things, the way I understand things, and what I'm looking at the news is that you know, President uh, Vice President Pence met uh, President Moon. Uh, they both agreed to continue the uh, the sanctions regime, the maximum pressure. Now they have different approaches because South Korea is taking the soft approach. Actually, I think what they're doing is they're testing North Korea, but yet they're not willing to trust North Korea. Every Korean administration since Kim Dae-jung has come out realizing that it's very difficult to advance trust with North Korea. Who's testing who here? Because I, I feel like the North Koreans don't lose anything by being here by showing this face mm -hmm. to the world, they get to engage, they get to look good, mm -hmm. which if they want to be presented on the world stage, this is what they get. Meanwhile, as you mm -hmm. said, they, they shift up their presentation, their parade of, of weapons. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. I feel like Kim Jong-un here is, is laughing at everybody. Well, he could be now, but uh, I think the way to judge this, the, the, the politics of the games is after the fact. Okay. Will there be cracks? Will he be able to create cracks in the alliance or in the international sanctions? Uh, effort. Mm. Is there any reason to believe that with the North participating in these games uh, that the, the effort to denuclearize North Korea moves ahead in any way? Uh, that's the hope. Everything we've seen so far, there's From nothing From where you yet. sit, what do you think? I, I think it's very difficult. However, when, when Vice President Pence met President Moon, uh, they both said that they'd be willing to enter into negotiations, but at the start, the denuclearization has to be on the table. Who's paying for this? Who's paying for the North Koreans to, to be in South Korea and to participate? Yeah, that's a good question. But I, one little anecdote: the North Koreans sent a ship, uh, a, a ferry, and they requested that South Korea uh, refuel the, the the ferry. Now, North Korea is under tight sanctions; they can only uh, import X number, five hundred thousand 
uh, X number of gallons of, yes. uh, of gasoline. Uh, evidently, there was no response from South Korea, so North Korea rescinded the request. Hmm. Right. So I don't know if South Korea is bankrolling this whole thing. I, I, I doubt it. North really? Korea is still making some money, you know. It still has a, uh, you know, the trade is not completely cut off. It still has foreign exchange earnings from workers I'd love in Russia to and China. Read the small print here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>